Hello everyone and welcome to the Flutter tutorial in which I will demonstrate that how you can use the state in Flutter to change the background color of the container. As you can see that when I turn on the switch, it, the container color turns to black and when I turn the switch off again, it turns to white. So now you know that what we will be implementing in this video, let's go ahead and get started. Now to create your Flutter applications, you can use uh, Android Studio, but you can also use VS Code. And I prefer VS Code because it's a little bit more lightweight tool. So I already have installed VS Code. So let me go ahead and launch it. Here's VS Code. Um, now I can go back to my debug, or sorry, view over here. And in the view, you can find extensions. And in the extension, you can see that these are the following extensions that I have installed. So the extension that you're looking for is the Flutter extension right over here. And once you install Flutter extension, it will add a lot of features to your Visual Studio so that uh, you can start using it with Flutter applications. So I can actually go back to my command palette. And you can see that I can simply say Flutter create a new project. If I select that, now I need to provide some sort of a name for the project. So I will simply say, hello world, that's perfectly fine. And now where do I want to put this project? I'm just gonna put it on a desktop, that's fine too. And it's gonna create the project and hopefully the project will be done. And hopefully it will open up the main.dart file. Let's see, it's still working on creating the project right now. And there we go. So it created the default file, as you can see, with all of this code. Now, if I try to run this application, so let's go ahead and debug it, start debugging. I already have the simulator open, emulator open on Android, which is, I think, Pixel 3. So it's going to attach itself to the Pixel 3 and show you that how it will look like when you're running it on Pixel 3. Now, the first time you are trying to run your applications, which are created in Flutter, the first time, it is going to take a little bit of time to warm up your emulator and then run it on the device. But after that, all the subsequent runs will be much faster. So we're gonna come back when the application is actually loaded on Pixel 3, and then I can show you how it actually looks like, the demo application and we will remove all the code and then we will start with what we actually have to do, which you saw in the, in the start of the video. So here we go. This is the default application that ships with the Flutter introductory project and it's simply a counter and you can click on this button to increase the counter value. Perfect. But obviously this is not what we are building. We are building a completely different example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all of this code except the line that is saying uh, run my app. Actually, I'm going to even change this to say app. There is no such thing as app. There is no class called app. So let's go ahead and create the class. I'm going to say app, which extends from a stateless widget. Everything in Flutter is actually a widget. A widget is something that can be displayed on the screen. Some widgets are visible. Some widgets are not visible. Uh, things that are not visible like padding widget, uh, center widget, um, alignment widget and all those kind of widget, uh, positioning widget are not really visible on the screen, but widgets that are available on the screen, visible on the screens are button, labels, list, and so on. So now it's underlining over here in the app, basically it's saying that there is one function that you need to implement, which is the build function. The build function is going to basically tell that what you are building you must have the build function because without the build function, you, well, you're not going to be rendered. Your widget cannot render on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and return something called a material app. A material app is very specific to uh, Android devices, but it also looks pretty nice on, uh, you know, non-Android devices, which is iOS devices. This is the title of the app, which is title Hello Flutter. And for the home screen, we are simply going to say that we're going to use scaffold. Scaffold basically means that it's going to allow us the opportunity to set the navigation or the top bar. So we're going to set the top bar, which is also our app bar, which is also a widget. 
and let's go ahead go to the next line and say title of the app bar which in this case will be text and we can simply say welcome to flutter let's put a semicolon over here save it and let's do a hard refresh by pressing this red uh, the green button okay so now you can see that we have the top bar it says welcome to flutter but we don't really have any body it's all white screen and there's nothing really going on so let's go ahead and see that how we can change that so inside the material app we're inside the scaffold and inside the scaffold we can also have another thing which is called the body all right so this will be the body the content of the app so i can actually simply say over here hello world and that can become the body as soon as i save it you can see the hello world on the right hand side in the emulator uh, being displayed so this is great but if you saw what we have to build it's a little bit different than this so we're going to start with creating a switch so let's go ahead and add a switch switch on change event it's going to give us a value whether the switch is turned on or off that's one of the things and another thing it's going to give us is a value whether it is true or false and now you can see the switch you can interact with the switch but right now the switch is actually off and now it's on you can interact with the switch great this is perfect i actually want the switch to be in the center so how can i do that well there are multiple ways for me to do these things i can simply go ahead and do a right click refactor and then center widget and then save it and now you can see that the switch is actually now in the center the problem is that i want to change the background color but switch itself is the main and the only control which can be changed so what i want to do is i want to put the switch inside some sort of a container so maybe then i can change the color of the container which is this white background but right now switch doesn't really have any parent apart from the center i can't really change any color to the center because center doesn't have a color property so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and right click refactor and you can say wrap with a container a container is an actual control which now is wrapping the switch and i can go ahead and change the color of the container so i can say color colors dot green just to get started we're just going to set it to green okay so that definitely works but um, it's not com completely filling the whole screen it's only filling the container's content of the child which is actually the switch so in order to contain the whole screen we can simply say constraints on the container will be box constraints dot expand so this is going to expand and making sure that now we are expanding all of it to you can see now it appears that everything inside the child has also expanded let's go ahead and do a hard refresh okay so now we can actually work on alignment of this because this is kind of like expanding all of all the way which kind of looks weird so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to go inside the container and I'm going to say alignment of the container or the items inside the container will be alignment center. And we are back to our good old switch in the center. This is great. So we're definitely getting close. The problem now is that if we turn this switch on or off, how do we change the color of the background? This means that we need to take care of the state, the state of this widget, the app widget. And the state will dictate whether the background color or whether the switch is on or whether the switch is off. The only problem is that we are using our class app, which extends state list widget, which means that this particular app class is state list. It cannot manage the change or the things that are changing in it, the widget itself. So what we have to do is we have to create a separate class that will manage the state. I'm going to create a class called app state. 
it's going to extend state full widget. Oh, actually, no, it's not going to extend state full widget. It's going to say that the actual state is coming from the app class. The app class will be the state full widget. So I'm going to just say state full widget. Now, one of the things which is a little bit weird is that all the stuff about the, the build function and all that stuff is going to be moved from the app class, which is a state full widget, to the app state, which is managing the state. Now, this class, the original one that we started with, still needs to tell that who is the widget that is maintaining the state. So we will have to implement one function, which is app state is going to return. It's, and the function is called create state. And who is going to create the state? App state. This means that the state of the app widget is maintained by the app state, which is right over here. Great. If you do a hard refresh, which is by clicking this refresh button and trying to see the application, it still works the same way. It doesn't really do anything right now. But now since we have created the app state, which is extending the state for the app widget, which is the app widget, which inherits or extends the stateful widget, we can actually go ahead and start using the state. So I'm going to go ahead and create a Boolean property. It will be called dark mode enabled, which will be initially false. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and also put an underscore over here just to indicate that this dark mode enabled property is a private property and it's only available inside the app state class. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we set this property to true when the toggle is on and false when the toggle is off. Well, the great news is that we already have implemented the on change event of the switch, which actually does pass you a value, which is either true or false, depending on if the switch is true or false or on or off. And we can simply go ahead and assign it something like this, is, not is, dark mode enable equals to value. Unfortunately, this is not really going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is that whenever you are setting the state, you have to make sure to call set state and put the state or set the state inside this particular closure. So now we can go ahead and say underscore dark mode enable equals to value. And what is going to happen is that since we are doing this inside the set state function, Whenever we are going to set the dark mode enable property to the value of the toggle, whether it's true or false, since it is inside the set state, once you set it, it is going to immediately fire the bill function again and re-render the widget. At that time, it is our opportunity to change the color from, let's say, black to white or white to black or toggle between two colors. Before we do that, let's go ahead and change the value on line number 28 to also reflect the value of the dark mode enabled. Okay, now we go back to line number 20, which is the color green. And now we can say, if dark mode is enabled, then go ahead and use the black, and then else go ahead and use white. Perfect. So initially you can see the color is now turned to white and now I can go ahead and click on it and now it's turned to dark or black and white. So it does toggle between two different colors because we are storing this value in the state which is dark mode enabled. So this is the use of state in a Flutter application. You saw that we have to create a separate class to accommodate the state and that class will also be responsible for building the actual widget. And the other class will become the state full widget, which is going to dictate that the state is being maintained by the app state class and not the state full widget class. 
If you have really enjoyed this particular video and want to support my channel, then you should check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of courses on iOS development. I just released a new course on the combined framework. And also I have a course on Civ UI, uh, Node.js, Design Patterns, uh, Vapor3. And by the way, these videos that you're looking at for the Flutter, I'm actually working on a brand new course for Flutter, which will be released in the future. So if you want to get a notification when the course is released, I highly recommend that you subscribe to my channel. And when the course is released, you will get a notification that you can go ahead and check out the course. But meanwhile, check out the YouTube description of this video. And I have uh, referral links already in the YouTube description. So please go ahead and use those links if you are interested in any of my other courses. I have a lot of other courses that you can see. And if you're interested, go ahead and check out my courses. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments.